In today's development update video, we're going to take a quick look at the new chamfering functionality that we've been working on. We'll start by navigating to the 2D milling dropdown and selecting the new 2D chamfer option. From the tool library, we'll select a chamfer tool and from the geometry tab, we'll select the edges that we want to chamfer. You'll notice when I selected the geometry in the middle, I didn't bother removing the internal edges. Later we'll see that those will automatically be removed by the chamfering algorithm. As I move to the Passes tab, we can see there's parameters to set the chamfer width, a tip offset to slide the tool down the edge and cut farther up on the tool, and most importantly, a chamfer clearance value that specifies how far the tool needs to stay away from model geometry that's not being chamfered. So let's go ahead and say OK and see the result. As we look at the internal pockets, you'll see the tool stops short before it hits that vertical wall. And when we look at the chain along the front face of the model, again, we'll see that the tool stops short before it hits the vertical wall. And as I mentioned earlier, we automatically removed all of those internal edges because naturally all of those would have resulted in a collision with the internal walls. Now you may have already realized that we could have gotten farther along that front edge had we shifted the tool farther down along the geometry or used a larger tip offset value. So let's go ahead and add another 2D chamfering operation. Select some new geometry to chamfer. And from the Passes tab, I'd like to show you a trick for how we can use an expression to calculate the optimal tip offset value. Let's remove the current value and begin entering an expression. We want to divide the tool diameter by two and from that subtract the chamfer width as well as five thousandths of an inch. It is important we add the IN for inches as our expressions are evaluated by default with metric values. So we'll click off and we've now calculated the appropriate tip offset value to maintain a 5,000 clearance from the top edge of the tool. If I'd like to always use this expression, as with any other expression in the software, we'll simply right click over the box and make this our new default. We can now say OK. And we've calculated a tool path that now is getting close to this top edge. Why? Because we've shifted far enough down on the tool to maintain the clearance against the wall that we need. So let's quickly review and add one more chamfering operation. Again, we're going to select 2D chamfer. From our geometry tab, we'll select the faces that we want to chamfer. Remember, if the chain is selected on the wrong side, we can use that new hotkey we learned about in the last development update video. And also, we don't need to worry about removing the internal corners because the algorithm is automatically going to trim those away. Let's say OK. And again, we've produced a chamfering operation that's trimming away any portion of the toolpath that would have resulted in a collision. Well, I hope you find this new functionality to be a help to you. But more importantly, I hope you find this video to be an inspiration to start precision deburring your parts on the machine. I'm confident your operators will thank you when they're no longer cutting their hands on the sharp edges that are traditionally left on parts coming off the machine.